Hello everyone and welcome to Dell Game 2021. My name is Daniel and today I would like to talk about scaling games with performance marketing. And just to briefly let you know, it's not going to be only about user acquisition, but we are going to cover multiple and interesting sections from the creative production, creative insights, creative in rates, angles, iterations, etc. So I truly believe is going to be inspiring and interesting, not just for the UA managers, but also for the creative folks out there. So once again, thank you so much for having me and let's jump right into it. So who am I for those who don't know me? My name is Daniel Rishan currently in senior committee for marketing department at Superscale. I have been around for a few years now. It should be actually five years in gaming slash a business where I specialize for marketing directly. And it all started a few years ago, actually at the high school when I was publishing games and apps uh, to Google Play and iTunes Store. Uh, and actually I published more than 200 of them and instantly knew this is the space I want to learn to be in and to explore. So after that, I joined Pixel Federation uh, when I worked for more than two years as a marketing manager. And after that, I joined Superscale and I'm really happy and glad to be here and to speak actually today about what we do, what we did uh, and shared our knowledge from the marketing space. Uh, for sure, on the right side, you can see my socials, my business email, so don't hesitate and feel free to shoot me a message, follow me, ping me, uh, whatever you can. I will be really happy to, to connect with you and we can always jump on the call and discuss interesting marketing topics together. And about our company, so we are Superscale. If you never heard about us, we are your game growth platform slash partner, meaning that we are not any kind of agency but we are your partner and that's our goal, our mission to identify all the untapped growth potentials uh, across all the business verticals, meaning that we are not focusing just on the user acquisition, for example, but we are in charge also of the creative production, app store optimization, uh, data infrastructure, LTV predictions, game design, basically all the verticals uh, and that's, that's the that's the great thing about that, that we can cover and help each partner with specific task, let's say, and be helpful actually for them. Because once they are happy, uh, we are happy as well, so we can grow uh, grow together. And as you can see on the right side, we, we try to do corporations with the biggest out there. And that's why I'm more than happy to be here and share any kind of insights and learnings from our, our job. So our table of content, uh, we will start very slightly about the information. What am I actually getting out of this talk? So you can know in advance what you can look forward to and what we are going to deliver. Then we also got very short UA quiz before we move to the main phases, let's say, uh, from the talk where we will discuss and highlight everything regarding the channels expansion who should you choose when you want to expand, uh, where to start, and everything from the creative side as well. Starting with insights, uh, winning rates, iterations, uh, creative angles, and at the end we also compare the performance between uh, different uh, gaming genres. Uh, so yeah, it should be very, very interesting, and I hope you are going to enjoy it together with me. You are probably asking yourself, what am I getting out of this talk, right? So to be more concrete, we'll go through multiple areas where we'll try to show you why expansion to multiple user acquisition channels is the right idea and right strategy for 2021. Then how to choose one, the correct one for your game title and game genre. For sure, it's really crucial to understand how the mo most powerful creatives are performing and what are those actually, how to find them and also why testing creative components together with creative angles is the best idea and best way how to improve your overall 
UA strategy and performance. And once you got more functional channels, it means instantly more opportunities to increase, to grow, and at the end of the day, to have fun as well, right? So to engage you in a little fun activity, let's do a short UA quiz. Guys, feel free to take a guess how much we spent on UA in the last three months. 500k or 5 million dollars? 15 million dollars. Take your time, be brave, like you saw the companies we work with, so it shouldn't be so hard to guess, right? And if you went for C, 50 million dollars, you were right. Unfortunately, you owe nothing, but at least you can have a better feeling about yourself. Uh, maybe you are asking why actually we are showing this kind of information and number. Uh, the reason is simple. Uh, this kind of huge spend was possible only because we diversify our marketing activities towards multiple UA channels. So we are not only focusing for Facebook, for example, or basically we are not relying on one source, but we try to expand as much as we can. And that's actually the results, right? Uh, with those kind of options, you can, you can have much bigger spend and actually scale for your game. And that's what this presentation and talk is about. What comes to your mind when I say channels expansion and what's the actual benefit from preparing marketing strategies this way? Let me show you. This is the majority approach, meaning they got a product, in this case it's game, and they decide to do marketing activity. So usually they will pick the biggest ones over there, which is for example Facebook, together with Google UAC, which is not a bad idea at all. The question is actually if you can scale to the levels that you want to. The main struggle starts with the campaign relation, right? Meaning for the majority approach, we are always using just the business ads manager, for example, together with the Google VAC dashboard. So as you might know, we are always limited over there with the data view and we actually can't predict anything. All the decisions we are doing are just from the limited data and you can decide based on CPI, CTR, IP metrics, and you can see ROAS numbers just for a few days. So it's not ideal at all, especially for scaling. When you decide to scale a lot, you really need to know when you are going to be profitable. And once you know when, you also need to know how much you are going to make on top of that, basically on top of those expenses you, you did uh, with the campaigns. And that's why I would like to show you the ideal recommended approach. It's the same case, we got a game product and we are already doing marketing activities on Facebook and Google. And we are not hitting our benchmarks. We want to scale, but we are struggling with those networks, right? So that's why it's important to start thinking about adding additional networks to your rotation and start exploring them. So you can have more opportunities to grow and to buy traffic from, right? Multiple sources, different audiences, different share of games. So that's pretty huge advantage. And if you are not doing that already, you are really missing potential over there. And not only that, right? You always need to understand what kind of players you are buying, what's their LTV, to know when you are going to be profitable, not just on the platform level, meaning iOS, Android, but also on the network level, because each network has different player group and basically different audience. And you need to really have prediction models per each channel. So we can better plan future strategies for user acquisition and mainly scale the big campaigns. You really can't do that blind and rely just on the CPI levels. Let's say, wow, I am buying players for $5 for US that should be it. I should be good to go. I can increase budgets, but that's not the case at all. I wouldn't trust that. I really need to know when those players are gonna make me profit. And I would rather personally acquire user for $50 when I know they are going to be more valuable in a way that they will be paying more through the in-apps, right? So that's the goal to be visible everywhere where you can so you are not missing potential. That will help you to scale a lot and you really can do that only if you have prediction models and understand 
players on a daily basis. It sounded simple, right? But let's say you are prepared to scale, you want to explore new networks, new opportunities. So where you should actually start and which partner, meaning network, uh, should you choose? The truth is that no one has a crystal ball, right? So it's really hard to predict in advance where actually we can find the best and most valuable players for our game. But on the other hand, we got tools, for example, App Any, Sensor Tower, etc. And with combination with our brain, we can easily find and track on those that are actually doing and achieving great things. But the main question is where to start? First of all, you always need to know your monetization model per each game. Meaning you need to understand how your game monetize. What's the share of in-apps slash as revenue? These are key things before you try to move to any kind of a network because as you might know or if you don't know each network optimize uh, on a different level meaning some of those networks optimize on a weekly basis some of them on monthly basis and some of those networks are taking to the consideration for example only as revenue data so we really need to know these kind of informations before and in advance so you can better choose one that can be the best fit for your game title the second one this one is a simple and part of the research as always you need to make a list of your biggest competitors ideally you need to choose at least five games that do better than you and not in not only in terms of revenue generated right but also in the user acquisition and creative activities so that's really important but at the same time you need to make sure that you are sharing the same target audience meaning that you are in the same game genre lastly make sure that you are comparing the freshest data possible in this case you can pick last three months and you will instantly know if your competitors are active in those networks or not uh, the biggest finding is for you that they are active and they are using multiple creatives. That's the key KPI for you because you can instantly know based on that information if they are pushing UA heavily or if they are just testing uh, the current uh, UA channel. It's always wise to compare only big markets data. It doesn't make sense to compare any kind of tier 2 uh, data because those can be most of the times just tests or small pushes you know to acquire more players and increase daily active users to the game but you really need to make sure you are doing these kind of decisions when you are choosing between networks uh, basically based on the us or key tier one markets data only so this is it and in the next section we'll go through the actual examples how we can actually do the good research and what are the key points over there so let's say we are in a puzzle gaming category. We have a puzzle game. So this is how our very quick and very simple research would look like. Uh, let's say we are interested in starting UA together with Ed Colony because we are, not, we are not doing UA over there and we would like to scale. So we also want to add more networks to our rotation. So Ed Colony can be, for example, one case and before we choose one we also need to see the freshest data as i mentioned earlier and to know if the big guys over there are currently doing ua and if yes that's the best sign to jump in and try to you know compete with them because they are doing great and you are not visible over there and you are definitely missing potential because they are pushing and and you are not but on the other hand you always need to know each network benefit so for example at colony is well known for their premium video supply um, which is also advantage but at the same time disadvantage uh, in a way that once you don't have very strong and solid creatives with the high ipms and conversion rates it's really hard to win actually those uh, auctions against advertisers so that's what you always need to keep in mind and know, know in advance before we move to the network but on the other hand if you got the resources right and you can produce playable ads 
videos, dynamic creatives. So basically you can be visible everywhere in their inventory. That's the best idea and best case scenario what you can do. And you are basically good to go. And you will just find out if that network works for you or not. On the other hand, we got another example, for example, Charboost. You repeat the same thing, you do research. If you can find the big guys over there that are also your competitors and that they are using a lot of creatives, that means they are pushing that certain audience and channel quite frequently, then you can always start considering if you should not add uh, this network to your rotation and start scaling more to acquire different audience uh, as you are doing right now. And same as we just discussed with Ad Colony, same goes for Charboost. You always need to know uh, what is it, uh, basically what they can offer and what are their advantages or disadvantages. So for example, Charboost is well known for their game genre targeting option. So meaning if you got a puzzle game, you can just run campaigns for puzzle game inventory. And this is for, for me personally and very good, a very good option actually feature because you can easily save money at the beginning. Once you are learning and running just wrong campaigns, you can easily exclude any kind of, for example, action games or arcade games or kids games, right? If you are just in a truly puzzle game genre, you want to attract those players that are, uh, sorry, those games that are actually in your game genre. So, you can, so it can be a better fit. So this is really great example and also one of the best networks benefits, for example, from Charboost. And we also got the next one. In this case, it's in Mobi. Uh, you repeat the same scenario as well. Once you know and you can see the freshest data, for example, in the last three months that your competitors are pushing heavily over there and you are considering, you would like to see if you can hit the same kind of performance benchmarks as you are doing with your current UA strategy and UA channels, then this is the best way to go as well. But before that, always try to learn and try to know what are the advantages of those networks and disadvantage, disadvantages as well. But at the end of the day, let's say you will have a list of six networks uh, and you can easily pick at least two of them to start and you will instantly know after some testing period of time and learning if those campaigns are good enough to go higher to scale or or not then you will instantly switch with the next ones and this is the ongoing process basically you try to rotate you try to change things on a monthly basis and to see how you can how you can scale not just from the one network but from the multiple ones so that's the, that's the main goal actually over here to be visible everywhere and try to run performance marketing everywhere where you can, but at the same time and together with the different approaches, mainly from the creative perspective. And this is the section actually where we will try to move for creatives as well, uh, because it's actually pretty crucial and important for scaling ad networks. Because at the end of the day, it's all about the creatives, right? You can't actually really scale if you are not having very strong creatives that are not attracting your target audience. So you really need to make sure you are doing great decisions. You are producing stuff that your audience love to see and want to see. So you are not having skyrocket uh, CPIs, eCPMs, etc. So this is the crucial part. And let me actually show you very great examples from the best performers in Ad networks. The first one on our list is from Merge Merchant. Uh, we will definitely stay in the same gaming category, puzzle, so we can better compare multiple puzzle uh, game titles. They are that are doing great job across multiple ad networks. Uh, before we move to the first one, uh, just to briefly let you know, this one certain video I am going to play is the best performing across multiple ad networks, which is more than important right you really can't have just one uh, best performing creative that is working across one or two networks right you always need to make sure you are able to attract with one video 
multiple channels and that, that certain video can perform and outperform actually everywhere where it's possible. So they do a really great job and they are visible with this one certain ad across multiple ad channels at the moment. So without any further ado, let me play it for you. So really, really nice, right? Uh, what do you think about it? Like I personally uh, loved it from the first moment uh, once I saw it. Uh, you can definitely tell I am not the targeted audience uh, for that game. But I instantly want, wanted to know who is he, who is missing, what's going on there, what's the story behind that, and was actually curious, right? And they really made a great creative in a way that I was curious uh, from the beginning. So they really are pushing for that emotions basically they want to evoke emotions at the beginning of the video which is really important especially for for ua channels right you can't really just show normal gameplay video uh, with some flashy text or whatever you really need to make sure it's complex it does make sense and that you can you can have a different approach uh, fitted for for your game so in this case they are using a very nice angle creative angle in a way that they use 50 percent of the video uh, just with the storytelling uh, slash 3d openings which were really nice made uh, as we just saw and for sure and of course at the end of the video as always make sure you got the call to action over there together with catchy headline so it's like fully complex and it's simple at the same time. Once you get the resources, you can do pretty, pretty interesting and beautiful stuff. Uh, one more noticed uh, and actually highlight is regarding the dimensions. Uh, like you probably saw the landscape, uh, landscape format. The truth is that the landscapes are mostly the best performers across ad networks. It's not always the case, right? Depending on the game, it's super individual but you always need to make sure you got one concept and you are able to produce it in both formats for landscape and for vertical as well and then basically based on the performance you can see which one is the better for you and you can actually push it in this case for merge motion is definitely the landscape one uh, i was doing research for them and they are actually pushing different creative angles different creative approaches mostly in landscape mode so that's pretty great learning as well for you to make sure and to actually know which dimension is right for you and once you know that once you got those learnings you can better fit and prepare your creative strategy next one is township and they follow the same strategy in a way they always want to evoke emotions early at the video they are focusing mostly on landscape format, uh, which is in big favor of portraits for them, which is really nice to see. And basically the same, same case as was with mer Merge Merchant. And in this case, they are not using any kind of special 3D openings, but let me actually play it for you and let me know what do you think about it. Very nice, right? Uh, completely different than Merge Merchant. Uh, different approach, but what they do great is to sh by actually showing any kind of gameplay features or whatever changes after 50% of the video's duration. Uh, and that's the most important part actually here to say, especially when you try to scale UA channels through the ad networks, you need to make sure you are able to attract your audience 
uh, at the beginning and you really can't just throw them your gameplay since the first second of the video, right? So that's why they have those great openings as Merge Mersion, as Township and they were based on evoking emotions in this case which is a really great uh, angle to do if you can nice the fit for your game you can always play with that you got plenty of options so we also suggest to do and prepare creatives in this way uh, because yeah you can you can instantly see and you should see the improvement not just in the core version rate but also from from the return of investment and that's why, why you should really start producing new angles and start playing with that, especially for the networks. Our next great example is from Family Island and let's already jump right into it. So yeah, this one is crazy for me as well, uh, because as we just saw, pretty crazy and insane 3D opening scene, right? Uh, almost like a movie. And then you got a simple game scene along with sound effects, which was their their angle actually, to play also uh, with sounds, uh, to hype basically the users, the viewers, and they did a great job, right? This creative is currently best performing for them across multiple networks. And same thing as we just mentioned earlier, uh, landscape is the one that is performing the best, so they are pushing for them. Uh, so very great example. Uh, and yeah, what do you think, guys? Like you can easily see th those kind of uh, angles and combinations that are truly performing. Like keep in mind that we are in the puzzle game genre; it can be completely different per each game genre, right? but we can already see a trend over here or let, let, let's better say pattern in a way that 3d openings or any kind of opening where you can evoke emotions uh, works very great because it will help you to move to the next phase when you can play with game features uh, showing any kind of simple game scenes along with sounds and actually you have a complex creative after that right and that's why it's important to play with those and also try to learn from the best try to do a research to see what they are currently producing what they are currently pushing and you can be really nicely inspired by them our last example is from the magical uh, just a quick disclaimer over here uh, as they are not running user acquisition in uh, networks only on facebook and uic you may be already noticed the different thumbnail and video dim dim dimension but what they do great is actually they are doing different approach in a way they try to combine three different angles in this video. It's going to be 3D opening uh, together with more scenes. Then they are showing features and upgrades for their buildings. And at the same time, there is at the beginning the story selection. Uh, start a new life, yes or no. So let me actually show it. So as you can see, very simple, but very engaging at the same time. So those were actually four great examples that are performing very well. They are using different approaches, but what they have in common is that they are not just fully focusing on showing gameplay of game, but they really want to attract and acquire users in a better way. And that's the goal and always should be, right? Like to be able to attract different audiences, with multiple creatives 
uh, so you can't rely just on one specific ad. You always need to iterate to move forward and to try the best fit for your game audience. And maybe you are asking, perfect Daniel, uh, those were very nice examples, but what's the actual creative winner rate? So let me show you, because you never know what was there before, right? How many unsuccessful ads they did produce until they were able to find the winner. And that's the main question, uh, actually. And you always need to have benchmark or KPI. You are looking and trying to aim for, especially for the creative production. If you try and if you want to <coughs> produce a lot of creatives on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis, you always need to track those kind of performers and to actually know where you stand and if you are producing great ads for your audience or you should move uh, with the different direction. So we at Superscale, we move currently in the range of 12% and just to let you know, like everything above 10% is very suitable for most games, but it's still true and valid, right? The more, the better, but this can be your benchmark as well. Or you can keep this number in mind that 10, at least 10%, that's where you should aim for. So what does it mean? Like your goal is always to have at least one great performing ad out of 10 produced. And by great performing, we mean that we are able to hit our project benchmarks, such as CPI, CTR, but mainly ROAS, right? Because there were tons of examples when we were able to hold very low CPI levels very nicely and for a longer period of time, but ROAS was not hitting uh, our benchmark. So in that case, that's not the great performing creative. Like we always care about the return of the spend and that should be also your main KPI once you are evaluating and comparing the newly produced ads. But as always, right, once you can track and have the overview of your creative activities, you can have a case studies. So that's why I also prepared one for you to let you know where you can aim for once you do great. And that is actually possible, not just to be around 10%, but you can also move even higher. So in this case, we are in different game category. As you might notice, uh, we'll be talking about action game and we actually did produce and analyzed more than 170 creatives uh, which is plenty of them i would say is a good sample uh, of ads different ads different you know angles and actually concepts and you can already see quite huge difference and split between videos and static images produced uh, the reason behind that is simple like you can see we also wanted to test static images to see where we stand, if those are scalable or not. And basically after that, and after those learnings, we moved in a direction where it was the best for us and most suitable to scale. And those were the videos. But it's still true that if you are having UA in certain network, and if that network supports stat static images, it's always a good idea to test those because you never know if that's gonna work or not. It can even happen that some static images can outperform the videos. Uh, there is just one concern and question if those ads uh, and basically campaigns together with static images are scalable because video in ad inventory is the biggest one out there and you can be visible uh, in different uh, platforms and basically spaces, right? So that's the main advantage of videos. But without any further ado, this is our case study. Uh, you can see the number of creatives analyzed and now feel free to take a guess like you saw the number 12 a few seconds ago so we already know it should be higher right the question right now is how how much higher and what's our actual creative win rate for this case surprisingly it's 21 percent you know and this is already a great number where we are trying to aim for and towards together with our partners uh, when we are producing creatives on a weekly and monthly basis and maybe you just ask your question perfect Daniel so that's really great case study a really great number uh, but what's what's actually behind that uh, what you actually did and how we can get there as well 
and that's actually a great question and that's the next topic for for the talk and just briefly you know it's possible only once you understand very clearly each creative concept and you can iterate 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 on a weekly basis this is the only way how to do it and let's actually show you how we do it at super scale so guys what can you imagine when i say creative iterations if you said for example game characters cars whatever you are right but there are actually plenty of them to play around with and to try find out which one is performing the best for your game and for your target audience so for example we got game buildings backgrounds specific levels because winter is different than the summer one right any kind of skins upgrades if your game uh, have those uh, so these are crucial components that you can play around with and goal is to run campaigns and basically a b or a b c test them uh, with your with your audience right and based on the results you can instantly know which one is appealing the best which one has the best e engagement and from which one you are actually achieving your goals so that should be actually about it you can have plenty of components in your in your game uh, you can always pick one and that's actually the most important part that you always need to do only one change in one specific ad if you really want to compare the difference in the results so then you can move forward to the future production and iterate even more on the other hand we have creative angles which are important as well and maybe even more important because once you got the working angle you can do unlimited iterations inside what inside that one angle if that makes sense right so those are actually harder to find but once you know this you can iterate and basically boost your creative production very easily and that will also help to scale all the marketing activities so for example when it comes to angles those can be for example animated videos sketches in black and white any kind of 3d visuals as we just went through a uh, few slides ago challenges storytelling tutorials new versus pro uh, actually opportunities are endless over there this is mainly for creative leaders to come up with the best ideal idea for the game which can work and which is the right fit right and also we were doing multiple different angles for our games and our partners and actually we got pretty pretty good case studies over there so let me show you first one So really cool huh uh, in this our case our main angle was to try combine and basically prepare scene with uh, gaming characters in this case those were the tanks but together with preparing the le real life action uh, so basically we prepared forest scene from the real life and once we combined these two things and our graphic designers prepared you know this kind of very nice and beautiful scenery we instantly saw the big performance jump in a way that we were able to engage more with our players and our target audience and at the same time decrease the cpa levels so this was just the one angle and from that moment we knew this is the way where we should keep our production and we started moving uh, on and preparing additional ones uh, from from the real world meaning that we are not just doing forests uh, as this, is, this was the case and case study but we prepared deserts oceans whatever comes to our mind it's all about just brainstorming together with the creative team what can be the best fit but once you find the working angle you are actually unlimited uh, to do any kind of additional iterations and that's the main goal not just as the creative guy but also as a ua ua person because once you got those assets you can better plan uh, any kind of user acquisition strategies for each market for each audience and 
that can unlock you easily any kind of scaling opportunities. So that was the first case, sorry, first example. And let me also show you the second one. It's going to be about the same game title. So we can also better compare and actually see what we did, what was our approach and what kind of new angle we did produce. So without any further ado, let me quickly play the second one for you. So what do you think? Like same game, completely different approach and different angle as well, right? The best part is that once this angle starts performing and you are hitting your benchmarks, what you can do or not can, you should do and always must to do if you want to boost your UA and actually scale that you start playing around with the another components uh, in the certain angle. This one should be really easy as we used three main characters we can do easily a uh, few switches between them or play around with the skins upgrades per each tank and lastly but not least background can be one of the component change as well so at the end of the day you are not having just one original creative that is performing well but the goal is to have at least multiple ones right so we can attract different audience and it can be better fit, for example, for females and for males, depending on the game title. But you, you understand the point over there. So you are not just relying on only for one creative, even though if that one is performing the best, you never know when it's going to go down, right? So you always need to be prepared. And that's why it's more than important to iterate on a weekly and on monthly basis, for sure, per each game title, per each UA channel and that's the key key takeaway from here and here comes the big question what types of components make the most impact so it's super individual and it's also difficult to draw any kind of you know precise conclusion because there are too many factors and too many variables to consider such as game genre the overall look of your game your strongest creative so far and so on but on the other hand, as I mentioned earlier, we are running UA for multiple partners, meaning they are having multiple and different kind of game genres. And from our experience, we can say that it is mostly skins and upgrades, uh, backgrounds, uh, any kind of additional uh, background scenery, then showcasing the weapons, uh, important items, and also gaming characters such as cars, tanks etc so if you are considering to start iterating those should be the ones where you can keep your focus on and you will instantly know once you run multiple tests where you stand where you should keep your focus on uh, etc so these should be really good to go and are actually really easy to do as well what if i tell you that the iteration can actually outperform the original video uh, do you believe that Yes, for sure. Like we have seen it several times and this is the best case what can happen and where you should be aiming for, right? This should be your main strategy to not just run your original initial creative you were preparing to do. But once you are happy and satisfied with the current performance, you always want to boost it even higher. So you do those iterations to even increase the chances and to serve additional players with the new ones as well and that's why i would like to show you another good example in this case we used angle called jokes we were telling a simple and lame joke between two tanks but you maybe already noticed that there's difference between between backgrounds so we were actually doing iterations focused for backgrounds and let me actually play the original one very quickly for you so you can have a better idea uh, of that joke angle
Yeah, very lame joke, I know, but you know what, it worked pretty nicely. And that's also the reason why we figured out that certain angle works, we prepared additional joking, you know, uh, not angles, but already iterations. And that's why those iterations are very crucial and important to do. And in this case, feel free to guess which one actually outperformed the original one you just saw. Is it the middle one, the purple one, or at the right side, uh, the gaming, the gaming one with the gaming background? Feel free to take a guess, and if you guessed the last one, you were right. And it was actually great learning for us as well because we saw a huge, huge differences in performance when we compared it to the original video, meaning that the winner version you are watching right now was outperforming so much we were able to decrease CPIs by 50% that we decided to move forward our creative production and actually plan and brainstorm all the new ideas that can come with this specific background. So that's actually our goal, that you really don't want to rely just on the original one, even if it's performing good and you are hitting your benchmarks, but you always want to improve it and get to the levels that you are able to scale much more easier. And when it comes to the scaling, like you always need to be aware of huge differences between gaming genres. And maybe you are asking yourself, like, is there really a difference? Yes, it is. And actually a big one. Like I am personally have been managing multiple and different huge titles from sports games to normal casual games, hyper casual and even, you know, hardcore slash mid-core games and you need to know your target levels not just on the CPI uh, CPI side but also from the retention, ROAS, etc. So you need to be aware once you are switching between different genres and you want to run UA you really can't rely on your previous game genre. For example let's say you have been managing sport game you are hitting CPIs under $5, retention, I don't know, D1, 50%, D7, 35 And for some reason, and in some period of time, you, you will switch to the different gaming category. And you will have to manage as your manager, for example, mid-core game. So you really need to know in advance your CPI levels and actually goals, targets per each important KPI and that's why I would like to show you something. So this is from our kitchen let's say and it's actually a pretty great table to compare. So you are watching four different games. Game one is in core slash mid core RPG game, very complex one. Game two and three are sharing the same casual gaming genre but completely different audience and game four is in mid core strategy. Uh, one more thing to highlight over here to better compare, to better compare it actually, we just took and pull out uh, US data as you can see down below also in the spent, uh, in the spent section and game one is the best case study uh, for this to let you know why I'm actually showing this. So let's see D7 RAS 5%, D30 14%, D1 retention 46%, D7 28% and CPI quite higher compared to the rest free games on the right side, right? Uh, at 43 DARS. So once you would like to, once you would show this kind of data, do you actually believe that you can be profitable? Uh, I wouldn't trust that personally and that's why it's important not just to understand these kind of CPI levels and your maximum benchmarks you can allow uh, to have for example on CPI levels and also on the 70 30 RAS numbers but at the same time you need to understand your acquired players what they do in the game uh, when they are paying <clears throat> etc so I can tell you that each every single game over here is profitable as we are running our 
prediction models and actual dashboards for user acquisition managers. They can see exactly if they are profitable, <coughs> let's say within one year, uh, that's the case for game one because it's very complex, uh, complex game and CPI is quite higher compared to the rest free as I mentioned. But that's actually the main takeaway over here, not just to understand your maximum um, benchmarks per each and per your gaming category, but at the same time you need to know exactly when you are going to be profitable and what's actually your maximum CPI bit and your minimum D7 or D30 RAS number in order to be profitable in your period of time. For example, for game one, it's one year, game two, game three, that was under four months. So you can see pretty huge differences and there's the main takeaway over here. If you really want to scale, you need to have these kind of prediction models and not just on the platform level, but also on the user acquisition channels level, because as we know, Facebook audience and players are behaving completely differently than, for example, use acquired users from Unity or Appleovin or AdColony, etc. So that's why those kind of prediction models and dashboards are crucial to have in order to start spending quite quite heavily because as you know once you start scaling you can instantly expect cpi rises and that's actually the reason why you really need to know your maximum bit you can afford in order to be profitable and lastly but not least are conclusions from the talk you know it is true that all the ad networks hide so many opportunities out there and you are actually here to discover them so they can help you super scale your game title but on the other hand in order to do that please always be open-minded and don't be afraid of trying new things like at the end of the day it's all about testing to see what's working for your game title what's not and if you are not here and ready to test, you are missing opportunities and you will be stuck in one circle. And in that way, you are not able to scale your game title to the levels that you would love to. So as I mentioned, there are plenty of tools where we can get inspired by those that are doing great and you need to take advantage of it and try to brainstorm more with the creative teams, with UA teams, how you can get to the levels uh, as they are doing right and in order to do that actually you always need to understand each channel specifically what they can offer you what are the disadvantages and at the same time advantages per game title then it will just pick the right ones for you and it's all about the testing as i mentioned once you start testing you will have more expertise uh, we will have different kind of learnings that you can apply in future and plan further user acquisition strategy for your game title. The next one is about your audience. So you really need to know your audience and their behavior. Once you acquire them to your game, you really need to understand what they are doing over there, what's their activity, and mainly when can you expect profits from their uh, from their playing, if that makes sense. And KPIs, or let's better say benchmarks, are very crucial over here because each markets, each market is different, and all the players are behaving differently. For example, US players are uh, playing and paying in a completely different way than, for example, uh, European players, and that's why it's really important for you to have, let's say, buckets of benchmarks per each geo and don't you know you don't need to be worried you don't need to have more than 200 of them but let's say key markets are good to go and way to go so for example you are going to have benchmarks for us then benchmarks for tier one tier two tier three buckets and you should be you should be good to go and in that way you will be able to optimize campaigns and actually plan campaigns more strategically across multi-channel activities and make sure you are having fun like well executed channels along with creatives uh, are the best way how you can enjoy your daily work together with your teammates
Thank you so much, guys, for your time. It's been really my pleasure to be here and to talk about marketing activities, what we do with Superscale, what we did. And I'll be more, more than happy to connect with all of you. So feel free to shoot me a message, follow me everywhere. And, you know, we can always jump on a call and discuss any kind of interesting and important marketing topics more in depth. So don't hesitate and feel free to do that. I'll be more than happy to answer and reply on all of your questions you might have. So once again, thank you so much. I really hope you enjoyed it together with me and see you soon. Yeah, thank you so much for the question. Very, very great one, actually. And my reply on it is quite simple in a way that we choose, you know, the most functioning components that are, that are currently working for us. And then based on that, together with Creative Team Lead and Creative uh, Guys, we try to come up with the ideas for the Creative Brief. And you can, you can imagine that in a way that our creative brief always needs to have at least five different ideas. And then we are actually moving to the production. And let's say every single week we are doing this kind of repeating process. And then we try to test on a weekly basis, uh, something different. And then based on the results and results of, of this test, we move forward. If that makes sense. Okay. And maybe the second question, what did you measure the, uh, how did you measure the performance of the creatives? What are the metrics? Uh, yeah, so when it comes to the performance, uh, we at Superscale got our dashboards, as I mentioned at the, at the beginning, where we can see basically everything from the NetRAS number, CPI, CTR, IPM, et cetera, on a daily basis. So this is our space, not just for the creative guys, but also for the UA managers where you can weigh where they can track on daily basis all the activities and performance. And for me personally, the main important KPI and metric is ROAS. Depending on the game, right? Uh, it can be D3, D7, or D30. You need to have one specific benchmark so you can better decide uh, for you uh, and to understand if you are going to be profitable with that certain creative or not. So yeah, for me, it's RAS, then IPM definitely, especially for the UA channels. Uh, it's installed per mile for those who don't know. Uh, this is very crucial uh, uh, metric because also ad networks optimize towards those kind of conversion rates, right? So IPM metric is always good to go. And CPI metric, quite tricky. As I mentioned, we got examples when we are able to be profitable even with the higher CPIs. So that's the third metrics I personally keep um, in mind. So Russ and IPM it is. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you.